äh, Talk. Desinformation und Fake News, Bekämpfung und Verifizierung. Fake News, how to fight it and how to make sure that you get your information right. Um, by Tony and King Barbecue. Um, we'd be very grateful for feedback on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag C3T or at C3Lingo. Thank you. So, um, the Harold is just introducing the speaker. So, who of you has used image research before to find out whether um, you've seen a picture before? Or Okay, very good. That's about a third. Now, I actually did this quite recently, and it's quite useful. And especially right now, where oftentimes you hear fake news or lie press, it's really, really important to find out what's real and what isn't real. And we know that um, you can actually de you can actually have deep fakes, so it's becoming easier and easier to produce fake news. And today we have an expert here who's a pr uh, who does production for a TV show and a and how verification teams work there. Um, thank you and applause for Robert. Yeah, thank you, Bijun. Uh, nice that you guys made it, even though it's quite late. And I was um, quite glad to see how many of you have already done reverse image search. That kind of makes me hope. And now I want to explain what further possibilities and tools there are to make it easier to verify sort of images. And actually verification isn't rocket science. Everyone can do it. And now I'll explain why I don't really like fake news, but it can be quite useful or it can be the right term. And then I'll talk about what kind of fake stuff we have, why people are faking stuff, and then I have a couple of examples to show how you can actually find out that they falsified it. Now let's start defining fake news. Our wrong information is wrong information that is often um, sent out via social medias via electronic channels they often um, start from an individual or a group that are basically um, that I have been asked to do that now of course there's many different um, fake news is basically a huge term that includes many many different terms now um, before we had fake news we basically had different terms for all of these things and a lie is still a lie it's not fake news actually and um, this fake news does not have any information about um, what kind of falsifying it is, who made it, and the motivation. And those are the kind of information that are actually important for us. Now, um, making fakes and sending them out, publishing them, has been more has never been as easy as it is today. Of course, we've had internet access and smartphones for a while now, but other parts of the world have only recently gotten um, smartphones, and also in crisis regions, especially when we look at Syria, that's sort of the first war that we have as much um, pictures, as many pictures, and so many pictures that we don't even, that we can't even have summarized them all or understand them all. And someone fr from Spiegel, which is a big German newspaper, called it the first post-factual war. And this is kind of an interesting term, I think. And um, if you have your, if you have your opinion already, basically, no matter what opinion you have, you can find it on the internet, and you can find facts that support your opinion. And this kind of spread is even sped up by social networks. Today, really, all you need is a phone with a camera and Twitter, and you can be your own producer of news. 
und sorgt natürlich dafür, dass diese Realität. Und das didn't really exist before, and kind of makes sure that a lot of these reality um, filters are not there anymore. So traditionally, um, traditional media really doesn't tell you what to think about me, what to think about a topic or how to think about a topic, but instead they tell you what topics to think about. And this filter is kind of lost now. Now, obviously, um, I have seen that there's a huge diversification of um, sources of news. Now, I've seen that movies usually used to be um, used to belong to someone very specifically and it used to be something rare and you used to know where it came where it came from and that's not true anymore i myself work in um, movies so this is what i want to look at so what can be the motivation of people falsifying movies first of all just for entertainment I have an example for that. The typical example for that is actually satire. Of course, there's also manipulated pictures and videos, and they were not made to um, hurt someone, but to entertain. Then there's political influence or propaganda that can be made from states or private people or even parties. I remember um, a nice picture from Iran, from Iranian military. They were not very happy with their um, rocket launches. So someone just um, opened Photoshop and um, basically had the picture that showed all the rockets launching, even though some of the launches failed. Now profit. Profit is the thing that um, we see in the American election. Um, fake news papers that um, apparently had websites and they found that they could, these Macedonian teenagers found that they could actually um, make money quite easily. So in Germany, this is not really the problem right now and can't be compared to the US um, election. But we have to decide where to draw the line. It was very extreme examples that we now saw from the US, and there's a lot of lies in this. But what about clickbait? So things are getting uh, made very important and also traditional media are jumping the train, but it's not behind the scenes something else is happening. And also um, attention. So if, if, if 20,000 accounts from Twitter are retweeting one count and you get a lot of retweets on this people are very very happy about this the people that are tweeting this and so it's it's fun and attention that the people get that post this on Twitter so let's look at the different sorts there's the satire so somebody that understands that for him it's not really fake news or it's not really lies and let's look at one example from the onion it's a it's a big it's like comparable to the german newspaper the postillon or the online news they published an article 2012 and they copied it one to one from an iranian um, press agency and the title was white people living on the countryside prefer Ahmadinejad to going to have a, having a beer or going to a baseball game and for the people that didn't get that satire it might also be wrong news but it was meant funny not not real um, so a lot of times also there's old pictures and they're put in a different in a wrong content and it's the simplest way of doing something so the pictures are not wrong, you don't have to Photoshop the pictures, it's, it's real pictures. You use Google, you find some pictures and you put the wrong context, wrong
title below it. Then the next step would be that you would have pictures that somebody works on with Photoshop or something like this. Um, I remember there's one picture from Lebanon showing Beirut and there's been a lot of smoke because there, it was bombed and the, bo the, 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 the smoke has been, they, they put more smokes on it and that's not the right of doing it, it shouldn't be part of the news. And last of all, um, there's stuff that is, there's no real content or no real at all, it's all completely fake stuff and you might have actors doing something like this. And we also looked at this stuff and tried to find out if it's right or not. And we found that it's a viral network that made money with this, with something that is and went viral and a lot of people looked at it. So since about two and a half years I'm in this part of verifying this news and seeing if they're fake or not and it all started with the um, in, in Munich where some people were shot by a terrorist and we saw that there was one single event, there was a lot of different fake news on this and lo let's look at some examples. And a big German um, television program also showed that picture. A student has posted a picture, so it's right that, that far. But this is not a picture that has anything to do with the, with the event that went on in Munich. So if you search for that picture, you found that it's an event that's from a year ago. And um, and very simply, by using the reverse search on Google, you could have found out that this picture, it's a different context that was taken in. So there's the Twitter account True News, if you can believe it or not. And um, and they ask you, is it is it real, you know? Is it really an active shooter? Or maybe, um, and you decide yourself if such other or not. And you see, if you really f try to find out where this picture comes from, it's a different picture again. It's from Manchester, where the police um, made a test and there were some actors playing a role. There's um, a nice picture of something that was manipulated, and again, it's the right place. It's the, the place where the, the, it took happen, the shooting. But um, the person on the picture is, was put in. And, um, and Sam Hyde, that's somebody that, it's a comedian, and he was put in with Photoshop like this, and so and he's famous for putting in relation to, to yeah. these such events. So what can we do? First of all, don't believe anything. You have to be very careful if pictures look too good to be true. Keep a distance on cases like this. And it's very true and it's very short and after the event took, took place, there might be a high probability that it's not as true as it seems to be. Well, turn on your brain, think about if this could be true or not, and look at details, 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 details. Might be something in the background if you see something, or there's some advertisement to be seen on the picture. So there was a, a video from Chemnitz where people said there was not a hand on people, and it was it was uh, video footage from a year ago, but you could see an advert in the back of the of the video, and there was a and there was a, a theater play on one in, to be seen on the background, and the date was a recent date, so you knew it was a it was a recent video. So if you open your eyes and look at it, you can really see what's going on, and you don't need to judge on it, but you can just see look and and see what you see. And if you, if you compare that with what it should tell you, 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 know, you might see that some things might not fit together. So the next picture is, uh, should come from, from Thailand. There was this uh, youth who was locked in the cave. And there was a video. How You see people putting stones out of the way so they can get out. 
also runde Kieselsteine auf dem Grund von einer what, what kind of stones is it? They're quite round and the, the cave and it's, it seems to be in the middle of a mountain. Why should there be round round pebbles, round stones over there? So, so what, what you actually see is uh, divers who do diving in a cave and, and they test something, but um, it might be 10,000 views that people looked at this. So if you look at it, um, can you see something where you can recognize a, a certain place? Is there special buildings on it? Are there like roads that you might remind you of something? Um, or there's some rocks in the background that might sing them? Does the weather fit what it should be? So if it's supposed to take place in the winter and everybody runs around in a t-shirt, you know, might be might be a hint that something is wrong with this. So in this you can get a weather forecast, or you can also get the historical weather forecast and see what the weather was like on that specific day. Was there rain? You can look at the, the number plates, you can look at the, the, the signs on the streets, and um, you can see if the, if the shadow that, that people, and it fits together with the time that this is supposed to take place. So there's some links um, you can find on the agenda where you can also read all these details and look at all the tools, and there's links to all the tools that I used. And there's a verification handbook that really helps you doing the stuff that I'm doing here. The next step would be to find the primary source of the picture. So if there was a, a catastrophe, you know, so if there's one video, you know, a lot of people would, would download it, they upload it again, you can find it in a lot of different places with the new media. So it's, it's important to find where this really originated, where it really came from, to, to find out if it's true or not. We had one video that was supposed to show an earthquake on a, on a, on a Greece island, and um, we looked at the uploader, and we saw that he posted on his, on his account a lot of pictures of that specific regions just before, so it was very likely that he was really there. Um, you can use a reverse engine search not only over Google, but also over different platforms uh, through a lot of different search engines. You can do really see who's the uploader, who's that person, and you can also try to find out where the scene, scene really took place. So, so if you really don't find a primary source, you might find out, you know, how many explosions have there been in Munich on a specific place. And you have to think locally. So local specialities in the city. So how, how does the, the uniforms look? You know, the, the people from the police, how do the policemen look, how do the firemen look, how do the license plate of the cars look? Is there local experts? So, if in Germany and there's a small city, um, there might be a way you find out somebody there's a, somebody who's who's working in that in that city and who might know about more about this and maybe have historical data about the city. And the, the tools that we use and we know a lot of times are not the best tools to use. The next video we're going to look at is going to be an explosion in front of a... You can't see a lot. You can see there's, there's smoke, there's some people, um, there's some, some power lines going over the street, and that's the scenery. And it should be in front of the US Embassy. So I checked, you know. Let's look at Google Maps. Where's the, where's the embassy actually at? Let's look at the satellite picture. Oh, hmm, looks a bit strange. The streets look very different. So the, 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 the dome pictures match together. So, there's, so maybe Google wasn't able to update fast enough. Um, I also checked Bing with also some wrong pictures of this. 
And there was an offset on the on the map, so the the locations didn't fit with the with the aerial pictures or the satellite pictures you could see, see in there. But there's also the Chinese Google. And there the maps were much better and there was no offset on this. And they also have the street view on this. And there you can see there's a sign which we saw in the video. There's the, the building that we saw with the spike on top. There's the power line score over this. So you can be pretty sure that the video was taken on the place that they actually said the, the picture was taken. So don't rely on the first source you get. Um, be critical. It's not only Google, especially in, in different areas of the world, there's different people who might have better information than this. This video shows the tsunami on Sulawesi a couple of months ago. And here we see a mosque that looks pretty badly beaten up and a colorful wall. And I cut some of it and you can see that it was um, taken, the, the video was taken in a colorful room. But it wasn't said where exactly. But also on Sulawesi, the coast is actually quite long. And to look at Google Maps seemed like it would take a long time. But instead, there, but luckily, there's programs like Wikimapia. They want to categorize everything. So then you can look at what, can, what coast it is. And then you can choose a category, like mosque. They also have category like churches, um, memorials, schools, government buildings, which we had once, which we used once um, for a video from Syria that was ostensibly taken between a school and a government building. And you can look at both of these layers and see whether that actually helps. And this is much more comfortable than using Google Maps and searching for house roofs. Why should everyone be able to do that? Well, we want to create a kind of anti-publicity. So these um, videos, they're shared so much, so everyone who can should be able to um, basically tell everyone um, what, what the truth is. Now, what I've shown you is was actually ve not very se severe, but even there, we should make sure that it's not shared as enough, shared as much. And these fakes can also make kind of false narratives. Now, what I've shown you wasn't very important for public opinion, but uh, we had pictures from Munich that showed completely different places where the crime took place. And um, the murder and murderers were who weren't really the murderers. And if they're distributed and shared on the network, then they might actually um, kill themselves or might be killed even. And in the worst case, it can actually influence societal debates when there's a special. Uh, to present a picture from a crime. So how do we do that? What kind of tools exist? I have an overview. Uh, the links are always there from Syria. You can use the website um, there. Almost all of the rebels use their logos in their in their picture uh, pictures and videos. I can't read Arabic. So I can't really um, see what kind of group is behind this video. And with this website, I can just upload my videos. They extract the logo and tell you what kind of group this is and also show you the Wikipedia. This is also logos from um, TV from TV ne from networks, so if you don't know which network has broadcast something and you want to find out uh, find that out, this is a very good source. The details in the background. Who knows how Iranian, uh, how uh, Iraqi 
um, plates looked in the 1950s. These are also for all African countries. So if you think that um, a video was taken in a certain country during a certain time and you can kind of see the plates, you can identify it. Um, the sun, the, the place of the sun, you can calculate with this tool, for example. If you, if you put in the place and the time, it will tell you where the sun should be. So it will tell you whether the shadows seem right. Um, as a, so this shows basically um, at this time an object with one meter size gives a shadow of 1.71 meters. Now, you can roughly check whether a video makes sense, whether it makes sense that it was taken at a specific time. Now, even Facebook accounts give you some um, ideas. Even if you look at sort of um, a, if you look at it as someone who's not a friend, so what is not um, what is not private but is public in is what you liked or what you commented on, um, and this is always public, and some websites can kind of find that out. So you can look for uh, first photos or posts. You can look for places that someone looked for. You can look for relationships between people. You can look for when other one person mentioned the other person. These are things that you don't see with Facebook in the normal, but instead you see it here. Even if you told Facebook that you want to be um, that you want to complete privacy, you can still use that. Now, for English-speaking accounts, you can. This kind of search actually exists in Facebook, but um, and you can also use users who like. But there's still some sort of UI problems, issues with using Facebook itself. This is why there's good websites that actually do that for you. Uh, uh, then there's a plugin that I recommend for everyone, Invit, which offers many functions like um, getting keyframes from videos, showing when a video was uploaded first, um, data, upload data, and um, the time is not really nice because a lot of the platforms have a lot of differences depending on where you are and um, whether you're locked in. And th this Invid project offers a standard that is comparable. Um, it uses it offers a magnifier. It offers for you to do a um, reverse search and to look for the mirrored image as well in a reverse search. And some, because some people think that you won't be able to find it using a reverse search if they mirror the picture. But this is actually pretty amazing, a pretty amazing tool for you to use. Now again, verification is no um, Rocket science. Yeah, but it is necessary for you to be um, on time to, to kind of make an effort and to train. Um, there's a lot of programs, there's websites, there's plugins, there's lots of documentation on how to do that. So I, I'd be happy if um, I awaken some interest in some of you. If you if you need some practice, please follow Quiz Time, which is um, an account by so, some journalists in German, um, some German journalists that uh, basically share quizzes, share um, practice for you, and they show they allow you to practice yourself, but they also show how to do that. Ah, perfect. Now this is almost the end. Um, we still have some time, so if you have more questions, please ask them.
Genau, wir haben tatsächlich noch ungefähr zehn Minuten Zeit für Fragen. Und wenn ihr Fragen habt, dann könnt ihr euch an die Saalmikrofone stellen. So, we have about 10 minutes for questions and we start, as always, with a question from the Internet. Is there some sources where you say you have to be careful in general if there's some news coming out of that source? Also Nachrichtenseiten oder so. Like special newspapers or... It's difficult, I'd say, in general, the Internet. I think you should always be critical. What we have um, said in our work is even if just because some other media reported it, it doesn't mean that they could not have been tricked. So just following other media is not enough because everyone makes mistakes. Why shouldn't they? So just taking it from other um, media um, is not an argument for the verification for the veracity. There's a contents on um, taking fake news out and also verifying these fake news. And one of the problem is that um, a lot of times it's more work than verifying the news and finding out if they're right or not than just retweeting it or repeating it. So do you think there's any thing you can do about that? So as a journalist, I think you're a filter. So basically you're you can't say, well, I want to um, falsify each and every lie on the Internet. But instead, if you if you as if you write about a topic, then you can choose one picture and you can make sure that this picture is actually right. And I don't think anyone has the capacity to make sure that there's no more lies on the Internet. How trustworthy do you think are the tools you're using and do you try to use even more? Um, I think they're good in what they can do, but there's always some interpretation and experience necessary. And oftentimes it's really just thinking hardly, thinking hard in your head. What I don't li really like are photo forensic tools that work on IL that use ILA that try to show you whether something was added, but there's actually no scientific basis for that. You actually see the photo and um, this analysis, but it's basically your interpretation. Is this? Um, is this fake or is this not fake? Because sometimes it shows that it's fake even though it's just bad lighting. Um, other programs where you still have to do something yourself, I actually trust them. But those forensic software, I don't really trust. So you didn't mention a lot uh, how you find the primary source of a video or a, of some news. So the first step would be a reverse search, because most of the fakes that you see are kind of recycled material. So if you do a reverse search, you can find the original video if it was five years ago. And then if it was five years ago, you don't really care about um, who actually made it five years ago most of the time. Otherwise, it helps to just look at what does it show and then just um, search for those keywords. We have one video from the Egypt Spring that was supposed to show um, demo people demonstrating, kind of um, throwing a police car from a bridge. In reality, it was actually just someone um, put in reverse by accident and drove from the bridge. So this is a way of um, this where you could search by just using keywords. Thanks for the good presentation. <laughs> Come a little bit closer. <laughs> now my question. Reuters 
banned all raw material. Um, they only want JPEGs. So look at your example with the with the missiles. Um, do you think w why the reason for this is why a, a, a source that's really harder to fake would be rejected, uh, but only the easier to fake one? Honestly, I have no idea, and I can't really explain it. I didn't even know this before you told me. Thank you very much, also from my side. People talked a lot about these deep fake stories. Did you see a, a real deep fake in real life? Not the examples that were on the television? No, I haven't seen it in real life before. Um, I've never seen it uh, that was um, sort of relevant enough. There's a couple of things that the future might bring, but for now we can still distinguish deep fakes by basically um, looking at the details. Because for deep fakes, a lot of the time the background kind of shakes around a little bit. It's not as sh sharp, not as in focus. And the software that was supposed to um, be able to um, fake voices, we haven't heard anything from that. So I think we will not hear anything from that either. That's one question from the internet. Do you have one uh, example that was used in, in a school circumstance where people, uh, pupils were uh, treated with fake news? No, um, of course, that would be great, but um, I think it might take a lot of time until schools actually teach this, and this might actually be something that has to be in sort of the larger topic of media competency. Microphone number two. One question, thank you very much for your presentation. It was really good, thank you. How far um, everything you can do with algorithms, so with your Facebook friends, what you see, um, how, uh, in what perspective is this something that's, that's important for you? Because it's also a kind of fake news that they produce in a certain kind of interest. And, and it's really hard to find out what algorithms did why put something on the Is that something for you? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Do you mean like um, the way Facebook struct structures what you can see? Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's very problematic, of course. That's also one of those one of the reasons why those um, those fake news are shared as much. Those echo chambers that um, have the social networks that try to present content that's interesting for you. And um, do you have a tip how to make this more transparent? Well, I don't know how to make social media more transparent. Of course, we need to find this, but to some degree, everyone it's everyone's decision whether they want to use social media to consume news or whether they want to use tr traditional news. There's different people who want to classify websites. So, so this, uh, it's a satire website or the left-wing or right-wing website. And to also show it to the user, so if you surf on a website, you would see what kind of type of website it is. It's a very difficult topic as well. With Facebook, I'm not quite sure. Well, if there's many people that have classified a link as fake, or if some experts classified it as fake, then it should at least be um, put on to this um, post that um, it should be sort of that this post should be um, I think this is a better system than having um, websites actually be classified also something like satire um, lives of sort of being able to fake something a little bit even though some people don't understand thank you very much for the presentation a question, maybe a suggestion. So, before you do the research, um, every media does his own research. 
but if you find out that something is, is really a fake, you know, do you also forward that information to other media and, and publish that information so everybody knows it's a fake? Okay, hmm. so the way I know it from other media is that we have conferences where we kind of share stuff and um, we go into larger groups and we talk about these issues. I know that um, in larger media um, with more than one product, they tend to have only one um, one verification team or they share their um, info. The last question from the internet. In one of the talks of the last years, um, somebody had the, the thesis that fake, fake media is not as big as it was suggested. So the question to you is, do you think that um, this has changed in the last year? Is there more fake media? Is there no less fake media? I wouldn't necessarily say that it became different. The patterns are the same, the motivation is the same, people that want attention, people that want um, to convince people. What has not changed, That all of that has not changed a lot. Uh, what we've seen is that there was a lot less breaking news about uh, fake news. So, 2016 was a pretty bad year in that way, and especially if it's something that incites emotions, uh, like terror acts in Europe or something, the output in fake, um, fake news is uh, a lot larger than it usually is. Um, whereas in normal situ circumstances we have less, and in 2018 it was actually better. Now, um, thank you. This concludes.